Hi, this is Asa, and welcome to my audio experience. A new prescription for a new you, America. This show's about you. It's about your health and your life. Are you a cycler? You ride a lot? I am. I'm a huge mountain bike fan. And they say that now most cyclists per, cat or per capita and even coffee shops that cater to two-wheelers, Portland, Oregon is even named America's best cycling city. According to a new ranking released, it knocked Minneapolis, which tops in 2010, to second place, followed by Boulder, Colorado, another great place, Washington, D.C., and Chicago. No other city in the United States has more cyclists per capita, according to Bicycling Magazine, which compiled the list of the top 50 best cycling cities. Although cycling culture is thriving in Minneapolis and Boulder, it boasts the second highest percentage of bike commuters in the U.S. Portland scored top points in the ranking that evaluated bike culture in cities with 95,000 or more residents. The magazine, which used data from the Alliance for Biking and Walking and the League of American Bicyclists, also looked at the number and quality of bike lanes, rack routes, and bicycling projects, cyclists, friendly cafes, as well as many residents that commute by bike and cycling clubs and events. So New York City will launch the largest bike share system in the country this summer. And then seventh, uh, San Francisco came in at number eighth. By the way, Memphis was named the most improved city for bicycling. Go Memphis, Tennessee. I'm talking about a little Tennessee town in there. Cancer is a big one. It's taken a lot of people's lives. And when I see that, I get so frustrated. It took my dad's life and was one of the toughest times of my own life personally. And I just, I look at our choices that we're making every single day as a country, as a society, and with cancer running rampant and our food choices getting worse because of the stress and because our lifestyles are so fast paced and, you know, the the struggle to earn an income has become a little bit more challenging. We're living in a time where it's tough and But our health has to stay on the forefront. We have to stay in a place where we make good decisions and good choices, understanding that what we do right now is going to determine the kind of health you're going to have 10 years from now. So whatever you're doing, remember, cancer takes about 10 years to form. It doesn't happen overnight. And so if you're in your 40s right now or if you're in your 50s, the choices you're making right now are going to determine what your health is going to be like 10 years from now. So what's it going to be? 888-283-7272. 888 Lines are open with questions about your health. You can go online, shoot me an email. We're going to Bob now. Hi, Bob. Yes, uh, thank you. I, I have a problem with my balance, and I'd like to uh, explain to you real fast. Uh, I'm 75, and I had a, an operation for a thoracic aneurysm that was in 97. And I take blood, I have an abdominal aneurysm, and I take blood pressure to keep my blood pressure low, which it works pretty good for me. Okay. And um, I had a a light stroke when I was had the surgery. Mm -hmm. But the only problem that I have with that, I believe it relates to it, is when I pick something up in my hand like a plate in my left hand, It uh, shakes. And what I did, I bought a bicycle. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to uh, ride that bicycle. I have a little bit of a problem keeping my balance. Well, if you're having an issue with the balance, Bob, I mean, one of the big things you want to look at is, one is the cerebellum is a big piece. And you're like, what is that? Well, it's part of the brain stem that goes down to the first cervical vertebra and it's always good to have someone evaluate that if it's out of position then it can start causing some balance issues so that could be one one deal to look at and then obviously your inner ear could be an issue to have looked at your primary care physician can look at that and uh, and do some evaluation on that there's some testing that can be done some vestibular testing to see if there's anything neurological that could be causing some of the balance related issues, and vascular components. So you might want to have them run some vascular tests to see exactly what's going on as far as 
if there's some restrictions, if there's placking uh, in, in the carotids. I mean, there's some ultrasound tests that are really simple, non-invasive, and they can do and run and see if that's a major issue. So, again, there's several things that you can do, and I would get that done, especially if you have a, uh, an aneurysm that they know about, then there's probably some instabilities within your vascular system, and that's what I would take a peek at because, I mean, really, that that is a big key, and it's something you don't want to just let you know, go. And from a natural perspective, your fatty acids are important, like your fish oils. That's very, very important. Vitamin E is a big one too. If you're not taking any medicine right now, then you might want to talk to your doctors about those because raising up vitamin E levels and also your omega-3 fats are just incredible. Rutin is another really good one for vessels that you might want to take a peek at uh, as well. But again, I, I would get someone to work on the structural aspect of your health because the structure, meaning the bones, muscles, nerves, chiropractic physicians are really good. Osteopathic physicians, DOs are very good at this as well. And that could be a real good component with what you're struggling with and what you're looking at. Okay. And that can be very, very helpful, especially in the situation where you're losing that balance and being able to figure out the root and getting it back. Triple eight, two, eight, three, seven, two, seven, two. Remember this, that if you're struggling with your health and you're trying to figure it out and you just can't, understand what's going on there's some keys that we always talk about here on the show and getting your health in order takes a a few steps when we come out of this break we're going to talk about those steps from the foods that you should eat to the exercise that you should do to water you should drink we're going to get into some of the key components and i really feel like that we make things more complicated than they need to be because health is pretty simple It's pretty much common sense, and we always have the revolutionary things like putting coconut oil in your skin is good sunscreen or that, you know, things like red yeast rice can help lower cholesterol. We learn all of these components that we're thinking, wow, I didn't know that. But the reality is if you just get the basics down first, then the other little details can fall into place. You can add this to your life, but the basics are your foundation, and we're going to talk about those when we come back. a best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to AsaRx.com and get your free book today. To find out more, connect with On Call Radio online at InShapeNetwork.com. Lines are open, 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Also go online, shoot me an email. I'll be glad to make it part of the show. And also hit us up on Facebook and Twitter. Going to the break, I was talking about the keys that we need to really maintain a healthy lifestyle. And there are really some basic ones. And I, I feel like that we make it so complicated. And the more articles I read, and now that there's more of us out there, uh, physicians that are in the media uh, that are, are doing this sort of thing from TV and, and radio and print. I, I just feel that we've kind of lost the basics, and I want to run through those with you, okay? Number one is you need a good food plan, all right? This is key because what we put in our body becomes our body, all right? We are what we eat, just like Grandma taught us. So the number one thing we need to focus on, key number one 
is to follow a good eating food plan that reduces inflammation. All right. Of course, I'm partial to the anti-inflammatory diet. Why? Because it's in my book, Empowering Your Health. But it's a key. I think that everyone needs a plan because you, you can't just go through life just eating whatever, grabbing whatever, and then wake up one day and either be overweight, have some disease process, be diagnosed with diabetes, whatever, and wonder how did this happen, which is where most of us are. And you have to come up with a good game plan. So having a plan is crucial. And a food eating plan, you want to call it a diet, that's fine. It's the trendy word. But a food plan is really what it is. So it's basically three, well, I like five meals a day, three main meals, a couple of snacks in between. And that gives you equal amounts of lean protein sources like chicken, fish, beef, or eggs, low glycemic carbohydrates in the form of fruits and vegetables, staying away from the starchy carbs and the breads and the cereals, and then your healthy fats, the almonds, the walnuts, the cashews, the avocados, those kind of things. That is a key. Okay, how you mix and match it, but that's the key. That's number one. Number two is to make sure you supplement your diet. We do not get enough just from our food supply alone. And already we're struggling just to get enough foods in that are healthy every single day. So it's critical that we make a move and make an important move to supplement our diet. There's four supplements that everybody needs for the most part. Okay, that's a good whole food multivitamin to give you a little bit of everything that you need. Now, for your kids, things are a little bit different. But for most people age 18 and older, this is about the same. And then a good digestive enzyme helps you break your food down. We've lost a lot of our enzymes and our foods. I don't care how organic they are simply because of our soil and it's so depleted. So making sure that you have plenty of enzymes critical to breaking the foods down. Fish oil of some kind. I'm a big cod liver oil fan. I'm old school that way. And I know krill oil is out and a lot of the folks are big fans of that. That's great. Krill oil is cool if you want to do that. I'm still a cod liver oil fan. I love the vitamin A, vitamin D. It's been been around for like, I mean, however many years, 50, 60 years. Great, great grandma used to give it to her kids, and there's a reason for that, all right? So it gives you the omega-3s that your body can use. It's fantastic, great for brain chemistry, brain function, hormone function, immune system, and the list goes on and on. So that's number four, plus it's got your vitamin D in it at a pretty decent level. All right. Then you've got probiotics. That's number four out of the foundational four. Probiotics put the good bacteria back in the digestive tract. And if you notice that we take antibiotics when we get sick from age whatever, age one all the way till now, you've been getting antibiotics when you get serious infections, which is fine. Not against antibiotics because there's many times that we need them, but it goes in, the antibiotics do, and they strip away all the bacteria. Well, now doctors are getting smart because of the research. And we're giving probiotics, typically when somebody goes on a round of antibiotics, to keep the good bacteria flowing in. Well, even when you come off of that, typically probiotics are something good just to have on a regular basis. Why? Because of uh, you drink chlorinated water, you eat food that's been cooked in chlorinated water, the chlorine's going to go in and strip out the bacteria. You want to make sure that good, healthy bacteria is going in there for healthy digestion, absorption, assimilation, and for your body to be able to utilize the nutrients that you eat every single day and be able to process and utilize them and make them into good new healthy cells. So the foundational four, that's your key number two. Supplement your diet with a good set of supplements that your body can use, not a bunch of junk that you don't know if you need or not because some magazine said that you need it. Okay? It's just important. I'm just I'm a big fan of that. Now, number three, key number three is to get blood testing done every six months. If you're over age 30, you definitely need to get blood testing done for a nutritional evaluation at least every six months. The blood changes every 90 to 120 days. And because we know that, we need some form of evaluation tool to be able to see exactly what's going on in our blood. The power's in the blood. Life is in the blood. Now, pretty soon we're going to be talking about some DNA testing that's come down the pipeline for nutrition but for a good, moderate standard that you can afford testing, the blood testing is really, really good and something to look into. Your doctor can do it. Many, sometimes insurance will cover it, sometimes they won't. But you need to get with a company, too, that can do a nutritional evaluation based on those numbers. And that's important because you want to see what's going on in your body. And if you're radically changing your lifestyle, you want to know that the things that you're doing every single day are making a difference 
in those numbers. If the numbers change, it means your body's changing. It means you're getting healthier every single day. So that is key. Number three, get your blood test done every six months, not every year. Even if your doctor says, we'll see you in a year, show up in six months and say, I'm sorry, man, I'm a little bit you know, aggressive on the, uh, on the preventative side. I'd like to have my numbers checked again. They'll be fine with it. They're not going to turn down an office visit. All right, key number four, drink plenty of water. We don't drink enough water every single day, and that does not include sodas. So sugary drinks and all that do not count. Now, teas, I'm okay with teas. Black tea, green tea, chamomile tea. If you want to count that liquid as part of it, that's cool. But your water intake every single day needs to be half your body weight minimum. If you exercise or you're an athlete, probably add about 20% more on top of that. All right? So you want to do, if you're 150 pounds, you do 75 ounces of water every single day. Your body's made of water. And so if we don't hydrate ourselves and get enough, the body can't function at its peak levels. So it's critical to get enough water every day. Make sure you get plenty of that. Number five is exercise. 30 minutes a day, five days a week, doing something you enjoy. I don't care if it's riding a bike, running around the block, running on, jumping up and down in your kitchen. Whatever you do, 30 minutes a day, five days a week. It makes a huge difference in your overall health. Those are five keys that will make a difference. We'll be right back. Go back to the phone lines when we come back. Did you know that you can listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora? For all the ways to watch and listen, check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. To find out more, visit the show online, InShapeNetwork.com. Phone lines are open, 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Welcome back to the show. This is your show. It's a show where your health is your greatest wealth. Let's kick it off and go with Terry. Hi, Terry. Welcome to the show. How you doing? I'm living well. What's up? Can I tell you a little bit about myself, see if you can figure it out? You can tell me whatever you need to tell me about yourself. Go for it. Well, I'm a truck driver, but that may throw you off. I'm, <laughs> I'm, six, I'm, I'm six feet tall. I got a 33-inch waist, and I weigh 210 pounds. Okay. I've been active most of my life. But here lately, I went down to uh, Walmart to get my blood pressure test, and it's like a uh, 126 over 89, uh, I mean, uh, 136 over 89. It used to be 126 over 82 or something like that. It's a, it's a, on that little machine, it says hypertension. And here lately, when I get real busy, I have breathing problems. But there's nothing wrong with anything that I know of. Okay. So your question is you're worried about the high blood pressure. Is it? something that you need to go look at medication? Is that what you're wanting to know? Well, I, I just want to watch what to be going on, what to be causing it. Uh, I know I don't eat right. I, I love fried chicken and mashed potatoes. Well, now, you want to ask me that question again? So you're wondering what's wrong, but you love to eat fried chicken and mashed potatoes all the time. And you don't well, eat Well, not well. all the time, but I, I do enjoy it. All right, well, look, why don't we... Why don't you tell me this? What did you have today for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Let me be the judge of where you are with your diet. Okay. This morning, uh, I don't even think I ate breakfast. But okay, there you go. Around, that's, that's, all right, so you skipped breakfast. Around 3 o'clock, I ate a hamburger steak and a baked potato and a salad bar. At 3 o'clock? At 3 o'clock, it's eating, yeah. So you, you didn't eat all day till 3 o'clock? No, I take it back. I ate them, uh, Mac Double, and uh, so famous, ate... famous chocolate chip cookies. Okay, that that's fantastic, especially when you're dealing with high blood pressure. So that's a perfect diet. That's probably uh, terrible. You think? Yeah, it's horrible. Let me tell you this. Here's the deal. Okay. You can eat that way for a period of time in your life, and you won't see much of an issue with it, all right? Your, your early 20s and all that, you can eat like that unless you've got some 
some major issues, and you, you probably won't see much recourse from that. You get into your 40s and or late 30s, 40s, and 50s and start eating that way on a regular basis, you're going to see things like blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol issues, even cancer. So one of the main things you've got to get focused on is learning and teaching yourself how to eat healthy. What does that even mean? And you being a truck driver, what you know, what is that going to look like for you to be able to prepare your food, pack your food, and and then also being able to eat well on the road? So there's that's that's a very long conversation. All right. Now there's resources that you can get to to help you. There's a whole food list in my book, Empowering Your Health. There's our our Get Well University program that has. Uh, eight CDs in it, and you do one CD per week. And for you driving, that'll be a great uh, tool for you because you can really learn how to get healthy from A to Z. So the book gives you the basics. The CDs give you the details. And that really goes hand in hand. That is a good piece too. But for the most part, with blood pressure, first thing you want to do is you want to go go to a doctor, tell them about your blood pressure, let them know that you're you're getting on a game plan, meaning that you're getting ready to radically change your life. You're getting ready to look into an exercise program, which I know after this conversation that you will be, <laughs> and because that's going to be a part of it. You know, and if that means driving a truck, and a lot of the truckers I talk with, they take breaks in the middle of the day. They'll stop four or five hours in their trip. They'll go to a truck stop. They'll get out and walk all the way around the truck stop at a fast pace for 15, 20 minutes, get the blood flowing, get the metabolism moving, and then they'll do it again at their at their deal at night. They'll stop at night uh, when they're getting ready to crash out for the night if they're on long trips, and they'll go and they'll walk again in the evening and get another round in uh, for the day. So there's different ways to do it where it doesn't really mess your schedule up too much, and you can stay on track with the time frame that you're looking at for your trips. But exercise is a big key. It's It's huge in this. But the doc, you need to let them know. The reason I'm telling you that is because if you go into your doctor, your blood pressure is starting to elevate. They want to put you on, say, 10 milligrams of lisinopril, whatever they're looking to do or what they decide to do, and they think you need to get started. They might not do that if they can trust that you're really going to get serious about your lifestyle and diet and change some things, and they'd be willing to monitor you probably every 8 to 12 weeks and see where your blood pressure is and tell you things like, well, if your blood pressure slowly begins to go up, within the next 8 to 12 weeks you need to come back, and then we're going to have to do something. But if you come up with a game plan of, you know, changing your different lifestyle choices, then that can make a difference. You see what I mean? So it's going to be up to you a little bit. You're at that, when you get to the crossroad of almost in diabetes or almost having cholesterol or almost dealing with, you know, any kind of, of issue with, but the jumping up and down in the mini trampoline is critical. And five minutes a day to 20 minutes a day has been proven. They've done studies, multiple studies, that have proven that that helps with blood pressure-related issues. And so that might be something to look at. And then also there are supplements out there that can help too. And your doctor will need to guide you on this, but there are things like citrulline, arginine, green tea extract, and they combine all these together in certain supplements that can help improve nitric oxide within the body, which helps relax the vessels and can help with blood pressure-related issues too. So there's good research out on that too. They've done clinical trials, clinical studies on it, and have seen good results. So just some things for you to think about, and I I think that getting a game plan together with you is going to be helpful. But again, get with your doc. uh, Let them know. First of all, let them know, hey, doc, my blood pressure has been running up. They're going to check in in the office. They're going to see that. Say, hey, look, can I do a game plan by working on my lifestyle for a little bit? And you got to get serious with it. It's not just a eat a meal every now and then that's healthy. It's radical. I mean, your whole mindset's going to have to shift. Because if it doesn't, I'm telling you right now, if you stay with the same habits you have, you're going to end up on medication and you're going to end up being in a position where you're not really happy because you could have done something about it. And so I hope that lights a fire on you that it's time. That now it's time. It's time to make that decision that you're going to make some new lifestyle changes and that, you know, there's no more just eating what you want to eat because it tastes good, just doing what you want to do, living how you want to live. Because the body's giving you some signals now that it's time to make a change. And we'll be here to help you any way we can and be a resource for you. But ultimately, you have to make that decision that you want to get well and you want to change. 
Thanks so much for the call. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Go online. Shoot me an email. We'll be glad to take it as part of the show. Our wellness provider network. These are healthcare providers in your area that believe the same way we do. They can guide you and coach you through all this lifestyle-based health care. And don't forget, you can call our team members during the day. Um, and check out the website as well. Let's go to Dave now. Hi, Dave. Welcome to the show. Hi. How's it going? Yeah, I'm living well. What's up? Very good. Myself as well. Um, I just uh, had a comment to make real quick. I was listening to one of your older broadcasts, I suppose, from the other day, and um, uh, there was a woman who was suffering from gout in her foot to the point of it almost being amputated, or rather her toe being amputated. And uh, I just had a comment to make real quick. I had gout really bad. Um, it was from overconsumption of red meat. And, um, you know, I, I at first I thought it was a broken toe, and then I realized that it had to be gout because of all the symptoms I was looking up on the Internet. Um I tried everything from, like, cod liver oil uh, to, you know, eating berries and whatnot. I noticed that the apple cider vinegar with mother worked really well, um, but it didn't necessarily – it didn't really help it as much. Um, and then I had a friend tell me about a, a treatment that you can use, uh, which you take peppermint oil and cayenne pepper or red pepper, um, and you basically – rub the peppermint oil over the toe in the affected area, and then you put cayenne pepper on top of it. Um, and the first day I tried that, I, I went to work. It helped out. It kind of numbed my foot. Uh, but within two days, my gout was gone. Yeah. Um, it's, it's an old homeopathic remedy, putting those two together uh, topically. Works very well. Now, did you take the apple cider vinegar along with that or just do the just do, just do rub it on the toe and that was it? Yeah, that's all I had to do, and, and it, I mean, it, it, it burned. I mean, it felt like a hot coal being put on there, but um, it kind of numbed the pain, and after a while, it was gone. It was just amazing how that, how that helped. So hopefully, uh, if that idea might be able to help that woman out, maybe she can give it a try. You know, um, I suppose it couldn't hurt. No, I mean, that's great. It's great information. I'm glad you shared that. That's, that's been around for quite some time. It's, it's, it's funny someone shared that with you. Uh, to do that, but naturopathic physicians have been using that for years. Bernard Jensen put that together. He was uh, uh, a naturopathic doctor years ago, wrote a really great textbook uh, Then a lot of the naturopathic colleges that they use even to this day, and that is in there, and it's just a great, great tool for gout. So I'm glad that worked well for you. I've heard many success stories with that, and the cayenne pepper mixed with the peppermint oil it does sting a little bit, but it, it does make a huge, huge difference. And a lot of times people combine it internally with apple cider vinegar to break down the uric acid crystals that are actually in the joint, and the two work hand in hand together. But that's great info. I appreciate that, and I'm sure if she's listening right now, that can be a real blessing to her. 888 Lines are open with questions about your health. We'll be right back with more Healthy Talk Radio. And remember this. You can always get your health back. It's all about changing your lifestyle choices. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. Connect with On Call Radio and watch On Call TV at InShapeNetwork.com. Lines are open, 888-283-7272. Welcome back to the show. This is your show. It's a show where your health is your greatest wealth, our wellness provider network, our healthcare providers in your area that believe the same way we do. Great coaches that can take you from where you are to where you need to be. You can go online, getwellproviders.com. Check it out. We've got a great team available, and they're growing all around the country. It's exciting to see all the folks that are jumping on board to be able to help you with whatever your health challenge might be. Quote for the day comes from Anne Frank. 
It says, how wonderful it is that nobody need wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. Get started today. Improve. Give what you can. Whatever your talents are, whatever your gifts are, whatever your abilities are to make a difference in someone else's life, you have that. And all it is, all you have to do really is to give it. Lori, you're next with us on the show. How can I help? I was wondering if you knew of any um, natural remedies for bunions. Would that work on bunions, do you think? Or do you know, uh, uh, can you recommend any natural remedies for bunions? Because I've got them real bad. Yeah, bunions are a couple couple things. One, there's an issue with low levels of vitamin D for a long period of time, so you might want to have your vitamin D levels checked on a blood test with your physician. The only challenge is once the bunions have kind of set in, there's not a lot you can do to get those to go away. It's more about prevention than anything. Are they really bad on both feet? Oh, um, especially my right foot. I read online that maybe massaging them with peppermint oil could break up the um, the calcium deposits or whatever that is that, that you know, that causes them. I don't know if that's can, true or not. It can potentially. Like no, it's not, it's not a waste of time. I mean, the peppermint oil mixed with the cayenne can be helpful, but at the end of the day, it, it can begin to break them down a little bit. But the, the, the biggest issue is there's a buildup of calcium because you haven't had enough vitamin D. See, when there's low vitamin D, the calcium really doesn't have any regulator. And the vitamin D is kind of the regulator of it, and it makes a big difference. So if you don't have enough, then that's where you get into trouble. But for the future, keeping your vitamin D levels up is going to be a big key. And you know that now, so that's fine. So it's just about coming up with a new game plan. That, that's what I would do is get a blood test done. And then from this point on, you, do you have a good podiatrist you've been working with? No, not really. I, I just I, I just like to go to natural remedies. My vitamin D was at 50 the last time I had it checked, which they told me wasn't yeah. too bad. Kind of. That's not too bad. 70 you know. to 90 is a better place to keep it. Yeah. And just keep, you so just want to get it up on the high end of the range. Yeah, do you eat a lot of calcium-based foods? Mm, no, my, my me, diet's very good. My fruit, fresh fruits, vegetables, um, very, very little dairy, goat milk, any, if anything, and kefir. Um, a lot of green vegetables? No, yes, lots of green vegetables. Yeah, so you're getting a ton of calcium. So, it's, see, it's about, it's just about, uh, vitamin D at 50 is not bad, don't get me wrong. But when you're dealing with some kind of, nagging little issue like bunions you want to bring it up to that next level and getting those numbers up between about 70 and 90 is really taking it to that next level so that's what i would look into just a couple of things i mean they're not going to go away overnight and that's why i would go meet with a podiatrist just get their opinion i know you want to do it naturally but still just just hear their thoughts i would at least go have uh, a consult and hear what they have to say and then go from there that's that's what I would do personally. All right. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. Lines are open with questions about your health. Let's go to Barbara. Hi, Barbara. My mother has aortic stenosis and I'm wondering if there's anything a person can do other than having the valve surgery. Have the doctors told her that's the only option? Uh, I guess they have. Well, here's the thing. Uh, the the big issue in this with aortic stenosis is many times it's about the only option. And you can support the heart, you can support the heart health, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, you want to make sure that, I don't know, from what I've seen, let me just say this, from what I've seen, surgery is about the only way. In that now you can support the heart with B vitamins, omega three fats, and a healthy diet. But with with the aortic stenosis, really, and one one other thing I have seen, and I, I've actually read a lot on, and have seen even implemented in some more natural alternative practices, is increasing high amounts of rutin in the body. You can do that from food based sources or supplemental force, uh, sources. I would go talk to your health food folks to see what they have in stock and, and, and that kind of thing. But that can be helpful, too. B vitamins are very important when you get deficient in those. 
you'll see a lot of that with aortic stenosis. But at the end of the day, you want to go talk. I would not discount the potential for surgery on that. I wouldn't. You know, and I'll tell you, I'll shoot you straight and, and always tell you kind of my thoughts on that. But again, I've seen a lot of great success with the surgery, so I wouldn't be too worried about it as long as you're in the hands uh, of a good physician. You know, I wouldn't, you know, you feel comfortable with him, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Just because there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of people that really get good results. And I just, they get scared when you start talking surgery, they get, they get, uh, uncomfortable and you think well I only want to go natural well there's some things like with the heart that you don't just want to go all natural you want to combine good natural habits and good lifestyle based habits but you also want to make sure you're using good common sense that's another hour in the charts I want to thank our producer Jay Patrick engineer John Garrison and the rest of the team go tell one person something you learned on this show and together we can transform our health our friends our families in our communities. You listen to the show that helps you get well, stay well, and live well. We're helping you live better. Do you know you could listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora? For all the ways to watch and listen, check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book, for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. This episode is over, but check episode notes for links to products and services you've heard about on this episode. Thanks for listening and subscribing. Please share the Asa RX audio experience with others and stay in touch by giving us your comment or review.